Hi guys, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Um, for a start, you haven't got to look at my face, which has got to be a bonus. But I'm also not going to be talking about web design. Instead, I'm going to be talking about the new version of OmniFocus. And in particular, how I set up OmniFocus. Now, this hopefully will be of interest, not just to people who already use OmniFocus, but also people that are looking to organize themselves a little bit more and be a bit more structured in their lives. So I wanna kind of show you how I work um, and how I use OmniFocus to help me do that. Well, first thing to talk about is gathering. We get stuff coming at us from all directions, don't we? We get emails, we get tweets, we get things through the post, we get tasks that our wives give us, all of these different things that collect in our lives. Now, for me, that all is gathered in my inbox in OmniFocus. So I create a new task like do this thing. Um, which sits in my inbox and I collect those through the day um, and they just grow and I add more and more and more. Then every morning I sit down and organize these things, decide what I'm gonna do with them. And essentially in OmniFocus you do three things. You can add a note um, which could link off to a website, link to an email, it could um, link to something in Evernote, whatever, or you could just put your notes in there. Secondly, you assign it to a project. So I'm going to put this one in miscellaneous. Um, and then also a context within which you do that. Is it, you know, is it a work thing? Is it a, um, a thing to do outside of the work? Or is it an errand or whatever else? Okay. So, but where things get interesting and what I want to introduce you to is how I organize my contexts. So the context of my work and the projects that I do. So context essentially is about um, different situations you might be in doing work, okay? Now, in Getting Things Done, David Allen's book, he talks about um, uh, talking about different contexts, you know, whether you're making a phone call on a train or wherever else. And you can end up with thousands of these contexts if you're not careful. And I found that for a long time I was creating a lot of contexts, most of which I were, wasn't using. So what I've done now is narrowed it right down, as you can see here, to a relatively small number of context. So let's have a look at the list. I basically sort it as follows. I have errands, which is stuff that I have to go out and do. So it might be a trip up to the tip to get rid of some rubbish. It might be popping to the grocery shop to buy something. It might be um, going into a nearby city to visit Ikea or whatever. That all goes under errands for me. It's when I'm out and about. I then divide into basically work and not working fairly obviously am I am I on the clock am I doing work or am I on leisure time and then finally I've got a kind of any time group which is stuff that's unconstrained I could be doing it while I was at work while I was not at work I could be doing it um, in pretty much any situation now if we look within working I've narrowed it down really to three types of contexts within which I work okay um, or subcontext. There's there's my general I'm working context, which is I've got a computer in front of me or an iPad or something like that. I can make phone calls. I can do um, write articles. I can do whatever. But then there are three subcontract uh, contexts. One is I'm learning. I'm you know I'm not trying to actively produce anything. I'm just reading, learning that kind of stuff. So that's if we click on it, it's got various books that I would like to read or um, things of that nature. Then there is um, my office, which is things I need to do when I next go into the office because I work from home a lot of the time. So for example, we're talking about buying a sofa um, for our office and I need to next time I go in measure up um, whether the uh, sofa will fit in that space. So I have to physically be at the office in order to do that task. And then I have low energy tasks, which are things that um, need doing, but are quite easy to do. So there are some times when you're lacking energy, isn't there, with work and you, you know, you, you haven't got the energy to do anything too heavy duty. And so 
you want to do something lighter. So that's how I kind of split my work contexts. From um, not working, again, as you can see, it kind of um, splits down into uh, several different areas. There's um, low energy homework, which again, I'm at home or I'm, I'm not working, I'm done in. What can I do that's, that's um, little jobs that will give me a sense of satisfaction, but doesn't take a lot of energy? There's reviewing my finances, which um, is a very specific action for me um, where I'm, I'm sitting down at the computer, normally with my wife, and we're going through finances together. So, so that's a very specific context. Um, there's not working and at home. In other words, things that I have to do physically in my house. Um, while some tasks obviously don't need to be physically located in my house. And then I've got this other context which didn't show up under work but should have, which is um, chasing. So I've got chase home and chase work. And that's um, uh, when I'm reliant on someone else to do something. A lot of people have what's called a waiting context where they're waiting on other people. Um, personally, I find that a bit passive for me, um, and so I have a chasing context. I've got to chase someone up over something they promised to do um, and make sure that they've done it. Um, so what I tend to do is on tasks that fit, um, are in that category, I set a deferred date so that they kick in, they appear after a certain length of time, and then I can chase a person um, up on that. So my contexts are quite minimalistic, really, um, compared to a lot of people. I don't have a context for, you know, the grocery store. I don't have a context for when I'm making telephone calls because I was just not using those. You know, actually, I don't sit down and do all of my phone calls at the same time. I don't sit down and do all my emails at the same time. So therefore, there was no point of having the context for those. But where things get more interesting is in projects. Let me show you what I've done with projects. Let's just collapse these up briefly. Okay. In David Allen's book, Getting Things Done, he talks about multiple levels um, of kind of organization. And I think a lot of the time what we do is we focus on the, the very bottom level, so individual little tasks and projects that we do, but we don't think about the bigger context of our lives, what it is that we want to achieve with our lives, what's important um, to us. And I think that that's an important way of thinking. And I, I've spent some time considering what are my priorities in my life as a whole. Um, and then what I've done is I've organized all my projects into that prior into those priorities and as you can see here I've got various folders under my projects which consist of the different things that I want to achieve out of my life things that are important to me and they're in priority order so if we start at the bottom of the list there's the kind of boring life tasks that need to be done um, as you can see things it's you know home maintenance it's going up the tip to get rid of rubbish it's you know improving my spare bedroom and you know boring things like that that I really don't care about very much so they're at the bottom of my list they have to be done but you know they're at the bottom of the heap and then it kind of goes up so there's helping others enjoying my work learning and sharing I I passionate about educating and um, other people so that's quite high on my list keeping clients happy con uh, connect with others experience more maintain well-being of family life now you might disagree with this order here for example it, it could be quite disturbing that helping others is so so low down on my list um, but there is a reason for that and my reason is is that looking after myself is um is really important if i'm going to help other people if i'm not healthy and happy myself then my effectiveness of helping other people is going to be pretty poor so there is certain personal choices i've made in terms of um, how i've structured these and organized them um, in the hierarchy but it, but what this constantly does is it ensures that I am looking all of the time at my life priorities. And as a new project comes in, if it doesn't help me achieve one of those goals, then you've, I've got to be asking, should I be doing this project? Is it the right thing for me to be working on? 
Sure, some stuff you have to do, and that goes into my boring life stuff. But generally speaking, I'm looking for projects that that help me move forward in one of these ways. So at the beginning of each day, what I tend to do is go into the forecast section. Um, and this is quite um, interesting. Tick that one off, actually. Tick. Um, uh, that's, this is quite interesting because it allows you to see what needs to be done over a period of time, you know, on different days. Um, now, I defer some things to certain days so that I can kind of see how busy I am. So I can see that there are some days like Wednesday um, next week, I, you know, I've got a couple of blog posts to write, but really that's it. So I can begin to, to plan out my, my week and how things fit together. So each morning, the first thing I do is I um, go into the individual day and I go through and flag things that I'm going to do on that particular day. I also go into my um, next list as well, which are all of just the next actions for each of my projects and go through and flag any that I fancy doing that day. And then what that does is if I go into flagged, I then have the, the things that I'm going to try and achieve on that particular day. And it's as simple as that. That's how I organize myself. Then once a week, I will sit down um, and I will review all of my projects um, and ask myself, do I want to be doing anything with these projects this week? Um, if so, do they have the right tasks in? And so I kind of step back once a week and look at the bigger picture. Also, each day I do tend to go into the chased thing and see, oh, look, there's some stuff that I need to be um, chasing, in this case, my wife over. Um, and, um, and so I can add those to my flagged tasks to do for that particular day. So that kind of gives you an overview of how I work. Hopefully that's useful. I know it's been a bit rambling, um, but it shows you how um, being organized can kind of give you that bigger perspective on life and stop you just drifting along, firefighting from one problem to another. And I think particularly that list of project areas enables you to do that. Contexts are great too for making sure you're working on the right thing at the right time. Um, and then a forecast helps you to organize you know, uh, you know, uh, over a longer period of time and make sure that you can fit everything in that you need to do. So there you go. Thank you for watching. And if you've got any questions about this, post it in the comments below.